our next moderator is very, very passionate about digital transformation and also the power of communications to drive social change. He is currently leading the Digital Ecosystem Development Division at MCMC, where he is a cross-functional team responsible to creating initiatives to move digitalization in Malaysia, as he is a strong believer himself that this will create a more open and transparent society. Now, previously, he headed MCMC's International Affairs, where he helped to promote Malaysia's digital agenda in the global arena, now, he is, again, I repeat, the head of Digital Ecosystem Development Division of MCMC. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to invite, please give him a very, very warm welcome, Mr. William Lee Kong Hua. Thank you, William. And of course, allow me to invite our panelists for the afternoon. Uh, please put your hands together for technologist Dr. Nurhani Zulkifli Abai. From University Utara Malaysia. Kita berikan tepukan yang paling kemuruk. Mangaste. Next up, please allow me to invite Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Imran Muhammad Arif from University Technology Mara. Our third panelist, she is quite nervous. She said, so please give her your loudest round of applause, Dr. Alzira Kane, University Science Islam Malaysia. And uh, last but not least, allow me to invite Professor Dr. Datuk Dr. Shazali Abu Mansur from ICAX University College. Kita berikan tepukan yang paling kemuruk. <laughs> Professor Datuk Dr. Shazali Abu Mansur. Okay, we have our moderator and also our panelists on stage. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our track number three, Sustainable Ecosystem for a Digital Society. Mr. William, the floor is yours. Hello. All right. Thank you, MC, uh, for the uh, introduction. Uh, and thank you to uh, MCMC Academy for uh, asking me to chair a very difficult session because anything after 2 p.m., uh, we are going to food coma uh, because, you know, Malaysia kan, kalau makan tu memang, ya, we go overboard a bit. Uh, so I just thought to myself, either I get a very quiet room, tak ada orang tanya soalan, or uh, everybody will agree with me because they have nothing. So anyway, uh, we have a very interesting session because it's about uh, creating a sustainable ecosystem. One of the questions that we always ask is, you know, we, we are very excited when the next thing comes up, uh, you know, chat GPT, blockchain, but nobody talks about, hey, how do you sustain this? How do you make sure that, you know, it's not a fair? Uh, and, you know, after, after six months, it, Eyes off, right? So uh, that's what this uh, session is about. Uh, so I think I'm, I won't go too much into the introduction because uh, I want to give time to our presenters, our panelists, to, to present their findings. And I also want to give time to uh, all of us to ask the necessary uh, questions. Uh, you know, in, in all of these uh, sessions that I've attended, uh, most of the time, it sometimes ends up as a conversation between the, the, the panelists and the moderator. I, I don't want that. I want questions to come from you because your questions are the ones that matter. So I think without further ado, I'll ask... Uh, and I just realized when I saw this, the, 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 um, the speakers, I'm the only one without Dr. T.S. or anything. So, uh, in chain, we, uh, just call me William. <laughs> right? I, I'll uh, invite, of course, uh, T.S. Dr. Hani to present your... Your okay. 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 For this session, because I'm also quite worried, everyone could be agree with everything I'm going to say, as our moderator just mentioned just now. So uh, thank you so much, first of all, to the MCMC for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, pursue with this research. So actually, uh, today I'm going to bring up the <coughs> uh, the research that we have done that is about the public and governmental sector adoption. 
a public and governmental sector adoption of digital signature usage for e-government initiatives. So actually, uh, when I and when I uh, see up the list of the uh, topics given by MCMC, actually, I'm quite interested with digital signature because I think that everyone is going to need to use digital signature, especially after the COVID-19, right? We think that it is very uh, significant to every one of us. But why does it still consider as low in uh, adoption of digital signature? So that's why uh, one of the uh, issues that we already have is why digital signature is still very low in adoption in, in Malaysia. Okay, and uh, and how we can increase the awareness and adoption of it. So actually, digital signature is uh, is using to protect and safeguarding digital data. So as we know now, we have a lot of data, uh, trillions, uh, really very huge volume of data has been uh, documented. And also we are now, everyone, if possible, everyone want to do everything online don't want to submit any printed form, is it? So how we are going to pursue this, and, and I believe that in every agency, because uh, in my research I'm going to, uh, I'm already focused in public and government uh, sector, which is we know for public and government sector, there are a lot of documents involved, okay? And this take time to submit, if you want to submit a claim, it makes take quite long time to process all the documents. So to uh, ensure that actually how we can make it faster, we have to adopt the digital signature uh, technology into our, uh, into the public and government sector. So, but uh, when we want to make it every document online, we have to know that there are a few issues that involve. That is how the, about the confidentiality, about the integrity, security, non-imitation. No one can reproduce our document, something that you have signed, okay, manually, <coughs> and you upload, someone can tamper the documents. Non-reusability, non-repudiation. Uh, Means that how we can avoid that. So it's not simply that you just copy your signature and you put in the document and you scan it and you send. Does it save? So this is what we have to consider before we change everything, all the process into the online process, all the documents into an online documents, we have to adopt digital signature to make sure that our, all our documents are actually safe. So in the digital signature, actually there is a unique signature for each individual. Okay, so it using the blockchain and cryptography to uh, uniquely create a signature for every one of us so that it cannot be tampered. So the, actually the technology of it uh, is that to ensure that only the right person can have a key. We have public key and private key. So this key is actually uniquely for you. Then uh, as, as how we use in our mobile banking, everything, right? We, we try, actually they are trying to give you a key that so that is to validate that it is really by your approval this document is signed or, or agreed. Okay, so uh, if you can see, uh, uh, when we face COVID-19, the, the need to use digital signature has rise up. Okay, it's become an awakened, uh, uh, something that awake our government that this is something you will have to adapt. And then, but uh, we, then we go back to our the Digital Signature Act is actually start in 1997 and has been managed by MCMC. Uh, however, the number of public and government agencies adopting the Digital Signature is still low. So here in this research, we are actually going to support MCMC how to increase the level of Digital Signature adoption, and also we do a comprehensive study uh, how what to be carried out so that we can uh, increase the adoption of digital signature. Okay, so for this research, actually, I'm go uh, we are going to focus about five objectives, okay, that we are going to see how the public and government sectors can adopt digital signature. The first one is we want to categorize the potential use case of digital signature relevant to the government and public sector's user. 
So the public and government sector is a very huge organization. So how we can adopt this in our daily, in the daily process of the public and government sectors. So this is one that we have to point out. Second is to determine the level of awareness among the government and public sectors in the digital nature. How much are the people in the public and government sector aware about digital signature? Did they know what is the difference between electronic signature and digital signature? So this is something that we have to consider before we go to the adoption. And that is to determine the level of digital signature feasibility, planning, implementation and impact on digital signature adoption among the government and public sector uh, users. Okay, so uh, then only we go to how to implementation wise, how, how prepared are the public and government sectors about this. And then we have to identify the factors that encourage and hindering the take up of digital signature uh, by the government and public sector. So actually what are the factors that will encourage them to use it and uh, actually what are blocking them from implementing it in their, in their agencies. And finally is the recommendations on uh, how to increase the uh, awareness and adoption of digital signature for the government and public sectors. Okay, so uh, actually for this research, we actually doing it uh, uh, using mixed method that is qualitative and quantitative research. So for this one, actually we are we are using our uh, we distribute the questionnaires to the user. So we have uh, uh, questions, uh, open-ended questions, and also a, a, a chosen question. Okay, for the participant. So actually we target for 200 participants from uh, all the ministries. Uh, however, uh, thank you for MCMC support. We get more than what we have targeted to get. So we get the total number of respondents, around 345 uh, respondents from 21 ministries and also uh, more agencies uh, involved uh, in uh, state agencies, for example. Okay, so from the respondents actually, uh, most of the respondents uh, uh, have working experience uh, between 10 to 19 years. That, uh, that means they are, they are senior uh, level okay, of uh, public servant and only 0. Uh, uh, or 7%, okay, less than 10 years, okay, and 7% is between 20 to 29 years. Okay, so actually, uh, this is the demographic means that most of the respondents are actually senior uh, public servant. Okay, and then we go to the position level where we target is the 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 public servant for actually two major area. That is the management area and technical area because the digital signature actually need the combination of both uh, area. So uh, from our uh, the background of the participant, uh, six percent is from the top management of the agencies. Okay, forty-six percent is from the middle management, that is also in the management that uh, area, and forty-eight percent is from the IT service department. Okay, so uh, and also for the experience is actually experience about using digital signature. Okay, so the experience of using digital signature. Actually, uh, from the participant, uh, 23% never use digital signature and 58% sometimes and 90% always use digital signature. So you can see here from the, uh, the uh, demography of the respondents, you can see that most of them are quite familiar with digital signature and uh, they are, then they can give more feedback for the adoption of the digital signature. Okay, so for the first research objective, uh, that we have to categorize the potential use case of digital signature relevant to the identified government and public sector users. So actually, uh, from our research group, we already do this by qualitative uh, qualitative uh, research or uh, uh, method, and we have identified it into four categories: that is, administration, finance, human resource, 
and also information technology law and policy. Okay, so this is actually the main area that can adopt digital signature in the public and government uh, sector. So for administration, we have uh, later generation uh, control government documents. Okay, like for example, um, grantana or something like this. You know, birth certificate. So this is all can use the digital signature to produce all the control document. Administration application. Okay, all the application. Uh, for example, job application and everything. So this one also can use the uh, digital signature. Administration process approval. Approval of budget for them or uh, approval of program, paperwork. So this is all also can be digitalized. And also for statement declaration. So we have our, for example, income statement declaration or uh, official declaration that they are working in certain department. Also can use this uh, uh, digital signature. And also in finance, so finance actually uh, use need uh, uh, need lot of documents, okay, uh, like receipt and everything. So uh, actually in finance, all all uh, process uh, in financial approval, actually we can they can adopt the digital signature in approving, for example, the purchase order, uh, invoice, everything, okay, and then financial document generation. And also financial application, for example, claim, uh, maybe refund application, so these kind of things. And for human resource, we go for uh, HR digital application and approval, uh, certified inform and also for certified information, okay, to certify certain information from HR. For IT law and audit is to more on verify document and uh, also online application. Okay, for online application. So this is where actually, actually the research uh, uh, the digital signature can be adopted in public and government sector. Okay, uh, I'm not going to uh, explain uh, into detail since that they already warned me about the time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I will go to the second research objective. Okay, that is to determine the level of awareness. So how much is the people aware, people in the government and public sector aware of digital signature? Okay, so actually uh, currently they are in the uh, average level, around 6.46 overall from 10. Okay, so that we can say that we are actually generally in the, uh, the awareness level is uh, moderate, okay, in the moderate level. So most of the participants, uh, of the research participants will recommend the usage of digital signature. However, they are moderately know about the cost, okay, how to implement digital signature. And uh, they also moderately awareness about the difference between electronic and digital signature. Uh, however, uh, most of them know how it looks, okay, about digital signature and aware, the awareness of the existence is quite high, okay, among the people. Means that even though the awareness is quite high about uh, digital, digital signature, but they are quite confused about electronic signature and digital signature. This is uh, the, the findings from the from the research. Okay, and then we determine the level of feasibility. Okay, for the feasibility of digital signature, most of the agency actually have a, a good level uh, of uh, finding the feasibility of how they want to adopt. Uh, digital signature. Okay, so there are there are certain agencies that still have less and none means that they didn't have any plan to apply digital signature. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Timer. Okay, so I will go very fast. So for utilization, most of the of, of organization actually uh, in uh, moderate level. Okay, of utilize the digital signature. And about planning, uh, most lah uh, current uh, thirty five point eight percent currently plan, okay, and then uh, twenty nine point seven percent is planning to use it in between one to three years, okay. So most of them planning to use in future, and then about the positive impact, we can say that most of them agree that digital signature is giving high impact in the services of public and government sector. Okay, and then to uh, identify the factors. Actually, the, for the factors, we identify that the, there are two factors, main factors that is uh, affecting the adoption. One is technology, okay, and second is organization.
Okay, so for technology, actually, what is uh, concerned about that is, uh, please give me one more minute, Mr. Timer. Okay, that is about relative advantage, how, how they can take the advantage of the technology towards the organization, and how is the compatibility about the platform, how we can integrate the digital nature to the current platform that they have. And they also concerned about security. Okay, if they demand is how much the security is it secure to use, and also about the organization, they actually more in information security culture. So this is actually what a factor that also will uh, improve the adoption of the digital uh, nature that is to improve the information security culture within the organization. So everyone should be aware about how how important it is. Okay, so the recommendation actually first is MCMC as uh, one of the lead that uh, bring digital signature to uh, the current level. Uh, we can improve on knowledge and practice. Means that uh, I can conclude that actually uh, they already have some uh, awareness. However, they need more focus on practice, how to implement, how it costs and how it can be integrated into their own platform. So this is actually most of the concern that they are they are raising up and uh, need uh, more awareness about this. And then second is to uh, focus on also technology and organization factor, as I mentioned before. Okay, in the maybe in the seminar, in the all activities that have been done. And third is about to emphasize uh, all the components, awareness, knowledge, practice, and adoption. Means that it should be comprised in one program. Okay, then, uh, in, uh, so that uh, in the program, it has to, to give awareness, knowledge, also how to practice, and when, how they can adopt. So we can guide them better on how they can adopt this into the cases that we have identified before. And finally, is to strengthen the collaboration with agencies means that we have to be more maybe close uh, close program with the agencies to assist them in adoption and how they can adapt digital nature into their uh, current platform into their current process so actually this is uh, the uh, findings of the research uh, so i think that's all from me i will give back to the uh, moderator thank you Uh, thank you, Dr. Hagi. Uh, I suggest that we hold on to our questions. Uh, we have let all the uh, panelists uh, present their findings and uh, then we will open the floor for questions. So without further ado, I will go to the next uh, presentation from uh, Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Imran from uh, UTM. UTM, sorry. ITM, sorry. Right, so uh, over to you. Suddenly you're getting colder. Mm -hmm. uh, usually I would stand and give lectures to class, but uh, today is slightly different because I see fellow academicians, and all of you, I'm not, your heads are all bubbling with questions. So I'll, I'll keep it simple as possible. If you have no questions, it's very good. If you have any questions, just keep it to yourself. <laughs> uh, we, we use the term empathy. <laughs> okay, uh, this uh, research is about awareness, perception, and acceptance of Malaysia's national digital identity, identity uh, initiative, uh, led by my fellow friend, uh, Dr. Faiz, and myself, and another friend of mine, Dr. Akma and Zaima. Uh, the leader is the statistician by profession, and myself, I come from the background of information systems. So I get excited over how people use technology, mm -hmm. how people want to use, how people do not want to use. I get excited for that. And he, as the leader, he gets excited over numbers. I, I can only go for mean, more median, that range. He can go for cross regulation. Uh, this uh, research, uh, thank you so much to MMC uh, for awarding uh, the second cycle last year. 
Uh, allow me to, to pick a news from uh, year 2021 where Home Minister Dr. Sri uh, Hamza Zainuddin said the national digital identity, uh, identity will, be, will be fully implemented by the year 2024. This was recorded in uh, the online news in 2021. And today we are at 2023. See it some part. I hope we are there. I'm not sure about the minister. Okay, so please avoid. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. okay, so this is where we are now. Malaysia is developing national digital identity uh, identifier. So what what is this in a, on the basic ground? So uh, countries like Nigeria and India have implemented this because due to the number of population there. This is something additional add on to your national ID. So you have your national IC, now you need this digital identifier, digital cert to add on to your uh, uh, IC. It's not to replace, but it's to add on. Uh, countries like India, they have, some, they have some serial number to identify them as who they are. So Malaysia wants to implement this in the coming year. So we looked at, now, you want to implement this, we looked at public awareness, perception, public awareness, perception and how is their acceptance, how would the public accept this if we were to implement this. So we looked at these uh, important aspects. Right, so we developed questionnaires, uh, we looked at the level of awareness and understanding and we looked at how to promote, uh, what, what things would have to promote this and what, how and would there be any in, uh, hindering uh, uh, issues that will come, and based on that, we've uh, come up with we did a cross evaluation and just a simple uh, descriptive analysis, and we come up with several uh, recommendations. So my slides do not have numbers; it's just based on uh, the outcome. The numbers are all magically in the report book, 400 pages up. Uh, I just like to highlight the 400 pages. <laughs> that, that's about it. Too. It's not easy for us to do 400 pages. Crack a joke to make the session lively. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we, we did a, a survey and we got uh, 1,000 uh, 1, respondents, participants for this uh, research. And our target population was, sorry, our uh, age group was about 15 and above. And we just do simple probability sampling. So, and we did uh, analysis, uh, sorry, statistics. So this is what we we found in the first uh, first set of the, the analysis. 58% uh, of our participants are early adopters, and 61% will try to adapt new technologies when they hear about it. Uh, Fifty-seven percent will enjoy trying new technologies. I'm not sure where my mom fits in something. Mm -hmm. She's not fit. She will just go. But I, I think I personally, if I were to answer this survey, I would be the fifty-one, fifty-seven percent. I enjoy. I enjoy having multiple apps in my phone. You know, I like having multiple apps. You parking, that's it. You use this app. You parking, you use this app. And you go on the toll gate, you use your touch and go, and then so many things. Okay, so I, I think I will fit that, All right? And some participants, they they uh, they are okay in sharing their nationality, name, picture online. I'm not sure with filter, but they are okay with sharing this. Some people are okay with sharing this. Next, if we go on to personal uh, personal uh, personal security information. Uh, we found that most respondents believe online security is their responsibility. Ex most respondents believe online security is their responsibility and expect protection from government and law enforcement agencies. Okay, this is quite common. And if you go down, I'm just taking a few points here and there. If you go down to awareness, perception, and acceptance, of the NDI services, over 90% of our respondents are concerned about the risks associated with this system. That is a fair point to say. 
And if you go on to this cross evolution, for a surprising reason, female adopt and enjoy new technology more than means. I'm not, I'm not saying it does. So, for some reason, I thought males will be dominant in the peak, but it did not. The data shows the other way around. Uh, there was one uh, respondent that we asked, well, you know, in, would you share your details on Facebook? He said, yeah, why not? Why, why would you share that? You guys on Facebook today, how is your day feeling today? She feels compelled to answer that. Because Facebook is, is she feels like, uh, uh, who's the founder of Facebook is asking her personally. So she feels compelled to answer that. So that's one of the reasons. Uh, younger age group are more inclined. Okay, this is a uh, Malay ethnicity show higher early adoption compared to other ethnicity. Yes, this is uh, the data shows that probably because uh, they feel that uh, they can use the system for their because some of them some of our respondents are business people, so they, they feel that yes, this uh, new thing will help them uh, move into. Uh, and urban residents, I think this is also uh, shows the higher rate for early adoption. Uh, next, based on gender, females again share more personal information and express higher concern. They like they share and they express concern. So this is uh, on an on an English term. This is contradict each other. You share but you are concerned. But this is what the data shows. They, are, they, are like, they like to share, but taco. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, I'm not sure what's an English term for that. It's, I like to share, but I'm also afraid. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, young people share more, uh, more personal information. Uh, yes, young people. My, my daughter shares a lot of this. Uh, marital status. Mar mar married individuals are more uncertain about sharing personal data online. Okay, I see everyone here. So. <laughs> Managerial work show highest concern about online privacy. Yes, this is true. Okay, this is true. This is what data is. Uh, last point: privacy, privacy concerns various, uh, very across states. With Tengganu showing <coughs> higher participation in online activity and privacy <coughs> concerns, nothing relating to PRM. So, nothing relating. Any eh? problem? Huh? So this is something. Uh, again, female prioritize personal data protection and express higher concern about risk than males. Younger participants are more cautious, yet they also share a lot of things. Okay. So we, we are asking, we are asking them to think. Now you are going to have this new NDI coming in. Uh, what, what do you think about that? What's your perception of that? So they say, okay, fine. But yet, we are also afraid of the security issue. Uh, in terms of employment sector, private sector have higher trust in the companies for personal data and security. Okay, yes. Uh, this is what data shows us. Uh, last point that we know this, the resident state, Pahang has the highest positive responses in various categories. Uh, I think we can... Uh, this is what we saw happen. I'm not sure uh, because even when we were doing this uh, data calculation, so happened we had Pahang. Although we all come from Pera, but so happened we have Pahang at a higher number. We are not sure how this happened. <laughs> uh, okay, now we ask them about the awareness, uh, influence or awareness perception of accepting these NDI services. Uh, yes, they are all agreeing on the usage of they know RFID, they know biometrics, they know key signatures. Okay. Uh, yes, they expect, they expect benefits out of it. Okay. Uh, again, uh, last point there, female exhibits higher familiarity with the identity, uh, identity system express more concern about risk and expected more benefits. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying my my research, our research is more to tailor it for females talking into the player of company. Uh, I'm sorry if I were to mix uh, Bahasa and uh, English. Uh, I speak a lot of Mandish at home, so this is not <laughs>
Uh, next, we go on to factors influence awareness perception uh, in terms of age, marital status. Let's just take one point. Place of living, rural residents show more familiarity with biometrics and IP addresses, and rural correct? and rural and urban residents agree on attracting users for certain benefit. Okay? This is uh, how we go. Uh, resident states, password or PIN numbers were popular across states with power havens, the highest number of usage. So these are people who says yes, we have used this before and having a new system will be also good to go. Alright, so now, where are we now? We are at what we propose or what we suggest, the implications. Uh, in order to implement or to roll out this project, we need to have targeted awareness campaigns as you can see some gender, some, uh, some states or some uh, sort of respondents are not aware of this, uh, are thinking what is all this about. So we propose or we, we looked at, uh, you should have targeted awareness campaigns. Uh, point number three, user friendly design, yes again this was also highlighted. Uh, they are willing to accept the new technology or the new system or the new technology, but they want something which is easy, not very complicated. Okay? Uh, uh, most of us will uh, agree with, maybe will agree with me, when we started My Sejahtera, everyone was complaining, everyone was saying, oh, a lot of privacy data, uh, KJ is taking our data, or somebody in... Uh, Somebody in somewhere in somewhere is going to take our data, at least all our money. Somebody is going to take our money, and, but, but eventually we use it, and eventually it feels fine anyway. Uh, so, yeah, in the beginning it will be uh, problems, but it seems to be okay now. Uh, obviously, we need to also look at policy and legal consideration, review and strengthen personal data protection. Uh, so that's also one. And uh, finally, we come up with a few recommendations. But these recommendations is uh, it's just our ideas from the data. Uh, again, education, awareness, inclusion, uh, collaboration with private sectors. We need to look at how to collaborate and how to implement uh, a good NDI system. Because we do not want a system which is only functional in one or can only be used in one sector, for example, only the banking sector. We also want something which can be, be used throughout all sectors. We do not want this to be something which is, you know, uh, not implemented in, in a fully in, in a full full scale. Right? And uh, yeah, other clear communication and other things like that. Okay, I think I have met. Yeah, this you can read. I always tell my club, okay, this you can read on your own. <laughs> okay. so, I mean, this final slide is just to to highlight uh, certain issues, but obviously, based on our findings, or uh, we come up with recommendations. That is the that, that is the point. Uh, that that is the conclusion that we come up with come up with our findings. Uh, but the main issue is we are ready. The public is ready, the public is uh, willing to take up this new NDI system, uh, but with certain consideration. Thank you so much. I have made up 15 minutes. I hope to get the work. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor. Uh, so I almost printed the 486 pages because yesterday I wanted to get a summary. When I downloaded the thing, I saw it was 486 pages. I said, this, kind of, this is your study. <laughs> right? Uh, and uh, I, I think what surprised me, at least in my mind, was uh, how the uh, fairer the league is more, more, more te technological uh, say me than, 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 than I thought the guys would be, but you know, the ladies are as well. So I think without further ado, uh, I will also now invite uh, Dr. Zira from uh, UT Science Islam Malaysia. Uh, her awareness and uh, perception is from the service provider's uh, perspective, so it's a different perspective from, from uh, the uh, associate professor. Uh, in Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minion. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zira, for the 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good afternoon to all esteemed members of the floor. Uh, my name is Azira. I'm from Hussein. Uh, together with me today is my co-researcher, Dr. Sharida and also Dr. Anantu. Uh, we are Ayah ladies uh, who uh, pursue digital technology and also excellent uh, digital innovation in the healthcare and also in the digital technology. Uh, the title of the topic today is Awareness, Perception, Acceptance, Adoption and of Malaysian National Digital Identity Initiative from Service Provider Perspective. Just a quick story about how we landed uh, this topic. Actually, we pitched for the same topic uh, like Prof Imran. Uh, however, uh, we do a challenge during the proposal pitching that the ecosystem of national digital identity not only need to be studied on this public perspective, but also in the service uh, service provider perspective. And when we got the letter, uh, as the letter, we are really happy. But at the same time, uh, in the five days time, we have to uh, provide a new proposal of a new topic uh, because I think uh, yeah because kerana mulut mal pada bilasa right because of that. But alhamdulillah. Uh, because of our determination, uh, be able to overcome it, and uh, alhamdulillah, we also uh, managed to finish on time. So uh, I think I don't want to uh, waste my time by introducing national digital identity. I think Prof. Imran already uh, explained to us, uh, but uh, it's pivotal for us to note that the success implementation of NDI not only involve public perspective but also the service provider, and even the success of NDI system depends on the service provider willingness to adopt and integrate to their operation. So that's uh, about overall studies. Um, uh, based on our literary study, actually, uh, we found that uh, the study on the digital adoptions on the service provider perspective not uh, really done in many countries. So we we can say that up on our best knowledge, uh, Malaysia is the first country ever to try to take up uh, this kind of study, especially to see uh, whether the service provider already ready. Uh, about the awareness and so on uh, on the digital adoptions. Uh, so for research objective, there are four objectives that we propose. Which one? Uh, which is the first one is to gauge the level of NDI awareness and understanding among the service provider. Uh, to identify the factors promoting and hindering the adoptions. Uh, to determine the level of readiness to take up the NDI and also uh, to provide recommendations to promote the awareness and adoptions. Uh, for this study, we employ a mixed method uh, research data collection, which is via quantitative and qualitative uh, approach. Uh, the quantitative, as I mentioned before, because this is uh, one uh, kind of a new research uh, conducted, uh, we developed a new set of questionnaires, which is already uh, validated by the digital technology expert, as well as uh, been uh, gone through for the pilot test result, which you can see that from the pilot result test, which is the combat of more than 0 0.7, which that the questionnaire is reliable to be conducted, especially uh, to study the service provider uh, adoption towards the technology. Uh, for, for, for you guys who want to uh, use the questionnaire, uh, please ask permission from us because we already applied for it. Uh, for the sampling method, uh, we, uh, because we don't have uh, much guidance from the literature, so we undergo a purpose sampling where we got around 144 service providers, uh, which include uh, various government, state and federal um, uh, entities, as well as uh, private entities, especially those who require identity uh, verification in their, manner, uh, in their processes. And also uh, for the question for the qualitative study, uh, we undergo a personal interview with subset of each sector that we uh, that we met. So let's go to the research funding for each objective. For the objective number one, which is to go to the level of NDI awareness and understanding among service provider. Uh, however, it, I think it contradicts a little bit with uh, Dr. Imran's output, where seventy five percent of respondents, when talking about respondent is service provider reported not having heard about the National Digital Act Initiative in Malaysia, which indicating limited knowledge or utilization of NDI within the industry. Uh, among all the variables, age 
has significant relationship with NDI awareness where younger individuals, when talking about younger, is like 30 years and below, uh, were found to be more familiar with NDI. This also suggests that they are more likely to seek information about NDI. However, older generation have not having heard about this initiative before. Uh, other variables such as gender, sector, employment, state, ethnicity, or education have no relationship with uh, awareness and understanding. We suggest that uh, those uh, service providers with different demographic background may have a similar level of NDI awareness and understanding. Uh, the factors, uh, to identify the factors promoting and hindering uh, adoption of NDI among service providers, there are four factors uh, which con comprise the highest percentage, which is the public awareness through information dissemination, seminar and training, secure privacy and data protection, and proper enforcement of NDI are factors that can promote the adoption of NDI. One, availability of effective IT infrastructure, government transparency, ensuring accessibility and also concern for good governance can be uh, factors that hinder the adoption among the service provider. Uh, the research output for uh, objective number three, which is to determine the level of readiness. So in terms to uh, measure the level of readiness, we approach based on 10 model. Uh, which is on the perceptions of NDI and also acceptance. Perception means that uh, tanggapan, uh, acceptance is penerimaan, so both. Uh, so in terms of perceptions, gender and sectors uh, shows a significance uh, to NDI, where gender, again, female are more prone to, to accept the idea of NDI uh, and also sectors, especially those that require the ID verification in their process, as banking, uh, tax, and so on. Uh, for acceptance, again, type of sectors and also state uh, give a significant uh, value to the level of readiness. Uh, sectors, again, those sectors that require the ID verification in their process, and also state, uh, especially those in Klein Valley, Selangor, and also state that have IT infrastructures, have given a, a good acceptance value uh, about the level of readiness. However, other variables show insignificant like age, gender, and education, and so on. Uh, for research output number three, uh, number four, sorry, uh, we approach it via our qualitative study uh, through personal interview and semi structured questions. We ask five uh, questions uh, and we analyze it via the thematic analysis. And the first question that we ask how knowledgeable are you about NDI? Uh, again, uh, for the personal interview, we didn't uh, uh, interview 144 service providers, but just subset for each of the sector. And out of it, 42 respondents, they do not know about NDI, which suggests lack of awareness, while the rest have a mixed level of knowledge and understanding about the NDI initiative. Uh, for question number two, uh, which we asked about their view on the implementation of NDI in their sector, and also what they can predict about the expected outcomes of NDI implementation, uh, again, uh, after we kind of promote and also briefly uh, introduce about the NDI, they agree about uh, the benefit of the NDI, which includes increasing efficiency, accuracy, decision making, and so on. However, uh, they also suggest it can pose several challenges, such as the infrastructure shortcoming in their system, uh, lack of awareness about the among the users, and also higher implementation costs. So they suggest that their higher uh, stakeholder should assess the cost benefit before implementing the NDI. Definitely they're looking for, for more benefit than the cost. Uh, the second, to invest the, un the necessary infrastructure. Because most of the civil providers that we met uh, say that their, their current system is already update, up, outdated. So if they want to add, add more uh, new technology, definitely they have to upgrade their current system. And the third one, to provide sufficient training to support the user. So the third uh, objective, which is part of our research uh, objective number four, which is to promote the adoption of NDI. Uh, again, after they explain, uh, they, they believe the benefit of implementing the NDI, like to improve efficiency, which can automate manual processes, reduce paperwork, uh, increase the accuracy, like the data sharing and so on, better decision making, conserving and so on. So moving to the question number four, uh, 
uh, which is the challenge that uh, of implementing NDI in their current aspect of the sector. First, definitely upgrading the existing system. So they believe that their yeah, yeah, their current infrastructure may be outdated and may not be compatible with new digital infrastructure. While upgrading this system can be time consuming and also uh, expensive. The second one is integrating different technologies. Uh, because when we're talking about ID uh, verification, definitely involve a big data, uh, IoT or cloud computing, which is also need to be considered when integrating it with their current system, or maybe to change entire of their, their system. And also, once new te more the technology, more the cyber threat. So the cyber security measure also have to take uh, into account when, when uh, integrating the NDI. And the last question that we asked to the uh, responder is, uh, do you think your site is ready to implement the NDI? In a certain aspect, taking into account the infrastructure, person and so on, uh, we can see that uh, major, major, major percentage, which is the 47 percentage, show they are not ready yet. Yeah. So this is data for this year up until April. So with that, they're not ready to integrate the new NDI system to their the current one. And this is made due to the lack of knowledge and understanding, and also cost uh, resource concerns. Uh, the technical issue is that they have to train uh, their staff on, on how. Uh, this added uh, verification process in their, in their uh, normal routine and also some have their own personal belief which can impact their job because they already custom, they are reluctant to change their, their, their work routine uh, while adding this another uh, additional layer of verification. So uh, based on our finding, we can say that literacy has merged as the main issue uh, for the awareness, adoption and so on. So definitely, uh, we come up with a few recommendations uh, to all the policy makers and stakeholders here to, to do a type of like awareness campaign, for example, an education initiative like a workshop seminar to all service providers. Uh, also, uh, some suggest that to have a simplified user interface and also multi-language support, not only Malay and English, maybe can, can address more diverse population in Malaysia. And, to able to reach out to more uh, community, means that not only those that uh, located at the urban area or the city area, but also the undeserved community, so that partnership with community organisations maybe can be helpful, and also continuous evaluation and feedback means that uh, the government should always have the open channel between the, the service provider and also the government and private sector. So in conclusion, again, uh, although younger generation have tend to adopt technology much more easier, but target integration should be uh, taken into account when addressing uh, more generations, uh, user and also service provider. Uh, also, uh, policy maker and organization must consider tailored approach to enhance NDI literacy and create an inclusive society that benefit all citizens. So uh, we also suggest uh, for future research, uh, if, if MCC still want to give us another opportunity, we would like to investigate the long-term effect of NDI adoption uh, on service provider and user, exploring the impact of emerging technologies on digital identity system, and assessing the scalability of the accessory of the NDI framework. I think that's all from me. Uh, maybe later on I'll open the floor to questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, 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 I'm also very stressed on the day that I will also see looking at the thank you time people. Uh, uh, thank you Dr. Uh, uh, Ziron for your uh, findings. Uh, the next speaker is a bit of a different flavor because we are going to talk about Pudu, not Pudu Raya as you know, but uh, P PUDO uh, pick up of uh, services in uh, petty centers in uh, so uh, can I invite uh, Professor Dr. Sherry from I ICAS University College? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Assalamualaikum. Salam sejahtera. Okay. Nampak semua ngantuk kan? Saya takut saya yang tidur Bukan dia yang tidur okay? So, nampak semua Very young faces lah Yang faces main, I'm getting older okay? 
tapi ini saya cuma macam komunitas komunitas saya ni, okay? Jadi tak tak macam trip, tak boleh, okay? Sebab orang pun kita musim ini rasa di bawah dua. Tadi dah pasca, pasca betul. Ini masih lagi, okay? So saya ingin solo. เราเชื่อว่าคนอยากจะเรียนเชื่อกันก็เพราะนั้นเราอยากจะเรียนเชื่อกันเป็นเอาเป็นเอกเดมิกนะครับแล้วถ้าเรียนเชื่อกันจะ
Kan limited space that does not fulfill the permanent meaning. Kalau pejabat pun dia pergi, dia pejabat pun dia macam-macam. Dia boleh hantar ke Selayu, dia boleh hantar bayar cukai, bayar apa tu. Banyak servis dia yang boleh dihidupkan. Okay? And then self-motivation. Okay, that means workload macam tak-tak lah. Dia macam agak tidak bermotivate kan. Ada bagi mereka, new things yang ada dekat Eddie ni is a pertama burden. Okay, pertama burden. Kos, nanti kita cerita banyak eh, why? Kan? Dan facilities ni juga semua. Okay, ada orang yang cukup apa. So, these are the factors yang kita dah tengok. Dan kita tak nampak with quotient air dan juga kita buat index juga. Okay, kita buat index. Okay. Ah, Kita tulis suatu lagi. Okay, dan kita buat index. Dan kita index ni kita nanti buat akan lihat eh, mana kah factor-factor yang penting. Okay. Ini jadi sekat-sekat yang, yang benda kita elaborate lah Macam staff, the more motivation tu Masa tu yang kita nampak A bit yang staff tak tetap orang orang suka dia buat dia Lepas dia kata gaji dia tetap tak pulang Dah kerja lima pas tahun Kalau orang berpunggah saya masa gaji seribu lima tak salah saya Dua ribu kan And then dia punya di malam kalau orang berpunggah saya Hari dia hanya seribu kan dia pulang Tapi tak ada kenaikan gaji So buat apa dia nak Uh, ada motivation kan So memang Pedi sebab gaging pun bukan dia belayar Habis saya mesti dia Syarikat yang belayar So this are the things that Motivation mereka Very low Dia dekat Pusat digital Internet Kadang kita pergi pun Time pun Kadang dia tak ada Barang pusat digital Ekonomi digital Kita rasa buka kan Tapi this are the things Tidak ada motivation Mereka untuk Kerja lebih Cost of the reward Okay Okay, so kita dah cari index-index tadi Okay, index-index tadi kita dah determine mana factor-factor tadi So kita ranking kan, kita buat ranking Okay, kalau maklah dia dapat more than 80 Hari September Okay, so kita buat 70 to less 20 to 80 Kalau less sikit, maka sikit Maka tak boleh lah, maka tak boleh lah dijadikan kuasa kudu kita lagi So banyak perkara-perkara yang tak boleh So banyak perkara-perkara yang kita lihat dalam indeks ni Dalam indeks ni adalah visual space Ada kat tempat kita parah-parah Barang tu tak sebab Dia orang cinta e-commerce tu is a part of things tu dia nak jual kan So separuh So orang pedi tak ada stop So dia, dia tak boleh buat Dia pun tak boleh buat Security Kita tanya sama ada Ada CCTV tak Pernah tak dipecahkan dengan tempat tu kan Ada pintu dia ada Ada Macam jari dia tak tu Dia check semua-semua tu We went to the Pedit check semua-semua benda tu And ada tak cross competitive users Dekat Competition juga Okay Lepas tu local product is the most important thing Okay kita dah tanya Untuk panel semua Di tayu kita Okay Apa perkara yang paling penting Baru tempat tu dia harap benda di Google Dia tanya tak ada local product nak di Nak dihantar Okay There's no local product yang tak dihantar And then accessibility Ada tempat tu jauh Memang Korea service tak nak pergi lah Kita nak kata nak ferry lah Satu tempat tu World ferry kan So it's quite reluctant Kalau Kalau dibayangkan Lima-lima Korea service nak pergi kan Bawa balik tak ada Tak ada So apa buat berlaku di Pedi Situ hanya Only Dia orang menerima Inborn ni Upon Upon hati Tak ada langsung upon Because satu Untuk perang Tak ada pun lagi ha? Dan nombor dua tu uh, Ada juga Tentanya okay? Dia ada untuk produk Kenapa dia tak minta guna e-commerce Dia takut ha? Takut apa Dia takut Takut order dia banyak Dia tak, ter, dia tak terbuat <laughs> Dia takut bila dia jadi e-commerce Tapi minit Tapi nak jual Dia cuba jadikan dia 10 minit Sampai kosong Okey Dan dia 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 takut bukan takut Dia tak tahu pun pun dia takut barang dia laku Dia tak pelik Macam dia buat kuih Buat kuih Buat kuih Buat kuih Buat kuih Buat kuih Dia takut apa dia tak pelik So Dia tu nak dia kata Anda ada Dia takut Dia takut Dia takut Dia takut Okey Dia kata daripada 58 Pagi yang kita Selidiki Hanya Tujuh saja Tujuh dia that meet the markah dia tadi Yang boleh you do datang Okay Tapi kita buat kali Kita tu banyak sektor kan 
the banyak factors puluh factor, banyak factor dan kita kurang daripada three critical factor after discussion dan the orders lah the orders masuklah uh, company the masuklah NTMC kan uh, the one ada three important factors ya uh, kita punya index kita kita create index macam ni okay kita create index lah kita punya instrument tu so after guna kata tadi okay uh, this is the ID and so yang ni yang berpula so lepas tu kita banyak kali lagi ni bezak macam apa bezak tu dua nanti kita buat lah kita tengok ni yang markah on the local product LT tu kan banyak resah kan ada ada cuba sebab puluh refus tu bu saya ni orang awal semua ni kalau saya lama macam ni, kurang buat jawab soalan Ok So tak apa kita kecepat cepat ni Ok Ok Ini saya tinggal Ya lah kita dah tapi sebab kita ada satu benda Ok Apa Ini cerita dia, tapi isu dia Masa kejenderaan Kerana tekan ni dah penting masa mana Ini yang merah-merah lah Ini sebab sebab berada local product Local product yang kosong Local product tak ada Tak boleh hantar Okay Jadi dia punya Recommendation Apa yang sebab dia Yang paling penting tadi Kalau sebab tak ada Kita mesti pilih the open code MCMC boleh Tak makan space for us Okay tapi kalau local product ก็ต้องการเงินเงินบอกเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเงินเง
Uh, if you can just, uh, before you ask the question, uh, if you want to direct it, any one of the panelists just mention uh, which panelists you'll be directed to. Hello, uh, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Dr. Doris. I'm from Faculty of Economics and Management, University of Pakistan, Malaysia. I would like to address all the panelists uh, because I think it's quite related. Uh, NDI uh, security. I would like to know, uh, you know, it's advocated for usage uh, nationally, but what about, uh, it's not just cutting across the sector, but uh, cutting across globally transcending the borders, and uh, also uh, the need for VPN, the usage of VPN in terms of uh, security, and uh, to what extent has this been going on to educate the public on uh, adapting and uh, utilizing VPN? And uh, my next question is uh, probably uh, specifically uh, for the last uh, professor. Uh, Dr. Dr. Shazadi, um, would you think that uh, probably it is good to have uh, a move towards enhancing and boosting local uh, entrepreneurial initiatives to have more products to be uh, supplied by the locals there so that there will be outflow of uh, products out and uh, a, a higher utilization of the courier services and uh, also on that uh, platform at the initial stage now, would it be good to integrate the various uh, career services so that they can work together instead of just competing randomly but helping to increase efficiency? Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Doris. Thank you so much for your questions. Uh, I just missed the first question, but I'll uh, answer the second one first. And then can you please repeat back your first question? <laughs> okay, uh, we have someone who... Uh, it's okay, let me just answer the VPN question. Okay. Uh, your question number two uh, relates about virtual product network with the VPN question. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, more security has to be built up on the VPN because you are now implementing, you are going to implement uh, this uh, NDI. This is a huge implementation, huge implementation. It, it cannot be done overnight. We cannot say, okay, tomorrow as you walk out of this room, everyone tomorrow will have NDI. It has to be done stages. It has to go through several testing, several processes, everyone knows. So I, I, I'm sure uh, they, there are implementations already in the VPN areas. Uh, in terms of, let's say, we take uh, for university's sake, uh, university has already implemented VPN uh, for various reasons. So VPN is already in the market, and, and certain government sectors, I believe, have already uh, have a VPN in place. Uh, they are using sophisticated VPN. So this VPN needs is already in place. Juma, uh, when you talk about uh, this national uh, NDI, I'm sure it needs to be in a broader perspective. So to answer, to final, to wrap up that, yes, it has to be implemented, it has to be secure because they are, now we are we are actually you know, devising a new new ID for each and every one of us. So obviously we need to have that place. And I'm sure the government will be it's working on this and I'm sure it's already in place. You might need proper testing and you cannot just implement it overnight. So that's my take on that. Thank you, Dr. Imran. Um, maybe I can answer the first one about the NDI initiative for inter-cross country, right? Uh, right now in Malaysia, the NDI actually is not being utilized yet because that's not the properly implemented. But what we can do that we can study how uh, the national digital identity that been uh, already in place in countries like Singapore, Finland, uh, India, and so on. 
But from our literary study and also from uh, certain networking that we do with those researchers in those countries, uh, even uh, they're also struggling to, to implement successfully uh, the digital identity. Uh, still, uh, although they have those uh, digital verifications uh, occurred uh, through online, but they also require those customers to come in in office for, for verification. So, uh, I would say that up until now we don't have success story yet, which is like 100%, but at the same time, uh, we cannot ignore the needs for intercross uh, verification uh, through the country and so on, because uh, if, if we move digitally, means that no matter where we are, we must be able to do the transactions. But uh, I, I believe uh, be able. I think maybe the all the policy makers here definitely will take uh, those challenges into account uh, for developing. But uh, don't uh, I don't think it's good to jump uh, to the intercourse uh, country before we see a successful implementation inside the country yet because we are talking about data. So definitely it's going to be a huge. Uh, huge alarm factor for all the public users and also for the uh, service provider entities. I hope I can answer this question. Okay. okay, thank you for the question. So, the product, right? Okay, so it's a very critical, right? It's a very critical factors that uh, will contribute to the success of this video. You know, local products, people will send things, right? So what happened, the area that we study was mostly the coastal area, right? And area culture punya and fishery punya kampung, right? Okay? Yeah, 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 all these paddy are located. So this, banyakkan dia keluarkan, uh, dia nak ikan, terus kan nanti. So, kalau tak nak nak hantar ikan, memang susah, right? But, in the market, you say we, some entrepreneurship, apa, boleh diproseskan, right? The whole ikan, okay? Dan Koropo, Eko, 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 Sarawak pun tak sama dengan But not the same as Koropo, Eko, Selanjo Mungkin Eko, Sarawak dan Islam Sebab Laut dan Laut Cina Selatan Kalau Semanjo pun apa? Laut sama ya? Itu air sama mungkin Mana? Ah, Tapi mungkin juga kalau ikan masin, berubuk masin Okay, bisa kan? Ikan berubuk masin kan? These are the things that Entro kena shift nama kementerian, kementerian Israwan. Kena promotekan this local product. How we can go beyond Sarawak? Okay, bukan di sini di Sarawak lah. So I'm sure ada banyak produk-produk Sarawak yang very unique macam kraft tangan ke rat yang boleh di di respond macam kit Sarawak macam kalau salah suka makan laksa Sarawak dia berempat dia ke okay. I'm sure they have products. So this, uh, this is not a job of MCMC, MC, okay? <laughs> MC, MC, this is a job of Kementerian Westawan, yeah? How to uh, make them become a little bit uh, entrepreneurial compared to what they have. And the second question, whether uh, the Korea service <coughs> asked me, yeah, they should, they, they should not call you. Call it means if you go against an anti-monopoly anti act. But they could share resources. Resources, as I said, very kalau 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 ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่
Sentence buat profit dengan dia profit tinggi lah uh, But we have to think beyond Bukan hanya pedo, but many things semua yang penting For the PAD Sekarang ni PAD dia hanya banyak kan saya kita pergi tengok kan Sudah dah sekolah balik, gunakan Main game Haa, uh, dia is a real thing lah Tapi tak apalah sebab dia main game dia play kan Bagus lah dia main game Tapi saya kan, tidak lah dia apa game dia main dia tapi susah So, to me still ok, tapi But yet, it's not fully optimized So there's something that MCMC Kena carilah apa Bagaimana nak optimiskan PD ini Supaya dia sustainable Yes, uh, thank you uh, Prof. Dr. Uh, Datuk Dr. Shabin, I am reminded uh, I read, uh, if I recall In China, they have a program Where it's one district, one product So, you're gonna, one district You have to focus on one product So that, that actually helps in, in Driving up the uh, e-commerce Right, I think we do have another, yes I remember uh, yeah, one more, one more question. Oh. Okay, uh, I am Ma from Steve Tramesha, and my question to the S. Dr. Hani um, How to differentiate between digital signature and e signature? That's number one. Number two. Uh, do you have any uh, suggestion to us uh, how to make sure our document is safe from the beginning? Okay, that's all. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so for the first question, what's the difference between e-signature and digital signature? So this is actually the core things that MCMC bring up in the seminar, how to differentiate between it. So actually, uh, I, I believe that everyone practice now is that we are going to snapshot our sign, right? Snapshot it, save it in our laptop, mm -hmm. and whenever we need to PDF, we just write it down. So this is electronic signature. Means that you make it electronically digital, and then you just paste it there. But all the PDF documents actually can be tampered, even after you sign. So this is, this is where it's very dangerous, it's not secure, okay? The file that you have already put your electronic signature is actually not secure enough. So the digital signature, actually they have different kind of technology where they have using the public key and private key and match it up to identify who actually do the signature. So every time you put down your signature, Okay, using the uh, digital signature technology, actually there are only four companies that have the uh, uh, blockchain technology to use the to, to provide formulation uh, the open agency, uh, any agency that want to use its digital uh, signature. So uh, they will uh, actually, uh, they have all the technology. What we can do is actually take the technology and put it uh, in uh, integrated with our platform okay whatever pdf or anything that we have so uh, what it will do is that uh, it will give you some code like what you have in uh, mobile banking online uh, mobile banking you will have some code that this this one will uh, when you have this code then you have to put the code and then it will certify that it is you and, uh, that is trying to sign the document so once you sign the document all the history of the tempered activity will be uh, historically safe in the document. So anything that is edited after that, it will say that this is edited without any signature. So we can know that it is actually what is the original documents uh, with the digital signature. So this is where actually the difference because with this digital signature is actually use the cryptography to electronically sign for you. Okay, rather than using the a snapshot, you know, and put it in your documents and then you just save it in PDF. So this is actually a different technology. And uh, the second question is, the second question is how? I already answered. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and, and I think the other thing that uh, DigiSignatures has is actually a force of law. Right? So if there's any dispute in a document, uh, when you go to court, the, the judge will ask, uh, the, you won't ask the persons who signed it, you ask the uh, CA, the certification authority to say that, uh, was this uh, properly signed? Right? Okay, was, was the document properly signed according to that? Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Uh, I was there one other question. Uh, what? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I see you. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, very good uh, afternoon. Okay. My name is Azmi uh, from Yusin. So I would like to ask uh, also TS Dr. Nohani for the uh, to answer this. It's very a simple question about the digital signature. Uh, just uh, wondering uh, whether do you do any studies on the comparison between other countries, like how the adoption was done in the countries like US, uh, Europe, or uh, uh, Japan. Okay, uh, how far are we in Malaysia uh, in terms of uh, digital, sig digital signature adoption compared to them? Are we far behind or almost there to, or to them or what? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. Actually, uh, we do compare okay, with a few countries. Uh, so what we have found out actually we are not that far. We are actually reaching there because uh, actually uh, MCMC has done a great job by having the Act first in 1997. Means that the Act has already been here like uh, 20 years, almost 20 years, uh, more than 20 years actually. So, uh, but however, the implementation of it is uh, slowly progressed. So we can say that in uh, uh, development, uh, we are as a developed country, and uh, in modern country, they, uh, most of them is actually already used to digital signature. Uh, maybe because one, it is like, uh, fr uh, it's uh, like uh, easy to implement, uh, more easy to implement. Because we are, as, as I said before, we only have four providers, okay, for the digital signature. And uh, as far as I know, they uh, do all the, the documents is with the PDF documents. Uh, and also have, have uh, or then uh, so that it's quite like limited uh, for everyone to use it. So, but however, uh, maybe the approach of business nature, maybe if you can now it is more used in the uh, we focus on the public sector. Maybe if it's okay, then only we can promote to the public. Okay, for the digital nature in the public use. However, I believe that NHTN has already used it for our e-filing, okay? So everyone is actually using it, it's quite simple to use, and uh, it's very simple, you just note down, and then it's there, your digital signature is there, and you can use the digital signature for one or two years based on the license. So it's actually based on the providers. If the more the government sector provide the facility for the public, it can be used widely, uh, very easily. So this is uh, my opinion. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Doctor. And uh, I think I've just been told that the time's up, so I'd like to thank our panelists uh, for your valuable insights. Yeah, in, uh, the new signatures, uh, uh, the and uh, and also thank the participants for uh, staying on with us. <laughs> Uh, you guys are the diehards because as I was uh, going downstairs just now, I saw a few people leave right there. I said, oh, you know, I could have been But anyway, thank, thank you for staying on uh, till the end. And I pass the time now back to our esteemed MC uh, to close the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Big end to our moderator and speaker. Thank you very, very much for the uh, coming to the session. And of course, we have almost come to the end of our session. And can I have all of our esteemed speakers on stage for a quick photo op? There you have it, our speaker, William. Thank you very much. Uh, T.S. Dr. Dorhani, thank you very much. Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Tibran, thank you. Dr. Azira Khalil, thank you. Representing my state, Sarawak, Professor Dr. Dr. Shazali, very informative. Thank you very much. Certainly, we hope to see more uh, improvement in Sarawak. Udo Epedi.